are these people? Here's the final article I brought from that, that was paid. This is the fourth one. All right. And this also comes with another video. Hopefully it, it's not been removed. Nope. Here we go. In 2021, Twitter hired a company with strong defense and intelligence connections called Aletheia to give it advice on how to better moderate social media content. One of their ideas, pre-platforming, the digital version of pre-crime. Instead of waiting for someone to say a bad thing, Aletheia proposed proactively identifying disinformation, manually or automatically preventing known disinformation threat actors from accessing the platform. If that's you and you squirm through anyway, Aletheia repeatedly talked about putting you in artificial environments or voids where your interactions would be synthetic in all directions. They even talked about replacing your real content with, quote, dog pictures, quinoa recipes, and sports scores. Aletheia described these tactics as adding cost to the adversary. The adversary repeatedly described as you. Now, Twitter didn't bite that time, but there's evidence that other platforms are already using these tactics. Others are planning to ahead of the 2024 election. Not just removals or deamplification, but generating fake content to slant public discussion, perhaps using AI. What might that look like? Stay tuned to Racket News and Public. By the way, this is Alex Jones ranting. It's an indie folk song. If you have never heard this, please Dude, go listen to it. Shut up and show me the Earth, it, Wind, and Fire. It's awesome. Just mash up. That's oh, that's want. that's good. I was made for Boogie mm. Wonderland. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So getting back to the Matt article. All right. <laughs> and now you've heard this replaced quinoa pictures and recipes. In the wake of the major hacking scandal in the summer of 2020, in which 130 high profile accounts, including those belonging to Barack Obama, Joe Biden, and Elon Musk, Twitter hired famed ex hacker and cybersecurity expert Peter Mudge Zatko to address the problem, which we just talked about in the last article. In late December of 2020, Zatko asked Twitter employees for visibility into their security arrangements. By the day after the Capitol Hill riot, on January 7, 2021, as reported in public, Zatko recommended that Twitter hire an outside contractor. The day after J6! Hmm. Quote, I feel in it an external investigation may be quite valuable. He said in a Slack chat, I'd recommend Aletheia Group for, di for the disinformation angle. Who's Delethia? Alethea was an interesting choice. At the time, only just founded in 2019, some of the firm's initial capital came by way of a $10 million investment by Ballistic Ventures, led by Ted Schlein and Kevin Mandia. Schlein, a general partner at Kleiner Perkins, sat on the board of trustees of the CIA's venture capital arm, InQtel. Eh, nothing to worry about there. When asked if InQtel, if InQtel funded Aletheia Group, Schlein told Public, quote, this is a question either the company or InQtel should answer, not me. Uh-huh, that, that really is encouraging. Aletheia would go on to conduct two sets of audits for Twitter. The company fought hard to keep these reports private, but the authors and many journalists who saw them never released the full contents either. They're embarrassing to Twitter, but the contractor's recommendations for fixing the company's vulnerabilities are also unnerving, and in parts read like the stuff of science fiction. The first Aletheia report, dated April 19, 2021, was a global assessment of Twitter's current capabilities to address, to address the misinformation and disinformation threat, including its organization, resources, people, policy, and process. Remember, this is coming basically from the intel community. So what are they going to do? They're going to bully Twitter into accepting the recommendations here, right? They must adjust how existing elements within the organization are working together, invest in new capabilities and technologies, and standardize processes and policies to stay ahead of the adversary. As long as the adversary is actually them, I agree with it. But that's not what they're talking about. The second Aletheia audit, conducted in August of that year, would be a cross-platform analysis looking at Twitter's recent history in an effort to better understand the broader social media ecosystem that led up to the U.S. Capitol attack on January 6th. 
Twitter signed off on a scope of work agreement that listed the feature head, a future head of the ill-fated disinformation governance board, Nina Jankowitz, as a senior member of the audit team. Red flag there. Jankowitz described her Aletheia work to us very differently. The agreement also said the second report would be directed by Cindy Otis, author of, quote, True or False, A CIA Analyst's Guide to Spotting Fake News. Okay. <clears throat> so you brought in literally a CIA analyst to, to, to break this down and to provide its assessment. The first report, however, is the one that Twitter executives and attorneys seem most anxious to keep secret. It identified Twitter as incompetent to manage its security vulnerabilities alone, even suggesting what capabilities it did have it owed to outside partners. In a particularly humiliating passage, Alethea claimed Twitter relied on the news media for awareness of threats and other problems. What? Quote, our current state assessment found that Twitter does not currently have a system in place to proactively track misinformation and disinformation threats. From our review, it appears that Twitter is largely only able to identify threats flagged through existing partnerships, outside assistance, or content going viral on its platform. That's what it should be doing, by the way. I'm going to stop right there and say, that's what they should be doing. They should not be pre-criming and pre-gaming and pre-censoring to predetermine assessing threats. When Twitter executives read these and other passages, they feared its release would add to public pressure to place the company under stricter oversight, including by intelligence officials. Hmm. True to form, when Zatko later became a public whistleblower, the reports would serve as the basis for a slew of damaging news articles. But again, the full texts were never made public. Why? One portion of the April report recalls why. Why? One part, one portion of the April report recalls that the CTIL file story Racket worked on with public last year in which a volunteer team of censors instructed team members in the use of sock puppet accounts, infiltration, and other offensive techniques. I think Rene DiResta might have even been involved in that one, but no, that's a volunteer team. The CTIL of volunteers, mm. uh, the CTIL volunteers were treated to a slideshow quoting a manual published by the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying the goal was to impair the operational effectiveness of the enemy, the enemy being people who use social media. Why? 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 Right? The April Aletheia report similarly contained a long section about increasing the cost to the adversary, as Matt Renshin, the adversary being Twitter users deemed threats or purveyors of disinformation. Removing content was useful, the analyst wrote, but... There were opportunities to proactively identify disinformation content before it's seen. Basically replacing the gray zones text. <laughs> yeah. The section included a chart describing the process of pre-platforming, which by which known disinformation threat actors, like our friend Kit Clarenberg, for example, would be removed in advance, but not only that, a knowledge management system described elsewhere in the report as something that would involve cross-platform analysis would track them after they were booted from the platform and feed preemptive strategies beyond Twitter, presumably to other data realms like Meta, for example, or Substack or anyone else that would play ball in censoring according to Aletheia. The piece de resistance of the report, however, was a section describing how placing people in artificial environments or voids could even include techniques like replacing a user's real content with dog pictures, quinoa recipes, or sports scores. Because everybody's looking for quinoa recipes. A human being had to come up with that <laughs> idea. My guess is it was Rene DiResta or Kate Starbird. That is total speculation. I have no knowledge of that. But I guess I would guess that my answer is probably correct. 
right? Alethea, the, the report ties in with a long list of other stories we've done in the last year and a half, including the report worked on by the Aspen Institute's Commission on Disinformation Order. Garbage. One of the commission's key ideas, along with such concepts as a digital holding area for bad actors, was cross-platform capability, meaning efforts to build one database so that a person booted from one place couldn't just relocate to another. As the Aspen commissioners noted, this tactic was employed to great effect in the U.S. election. The example cited was the Election Integrity Partnership, an early prototype that encompassed at least seven internet platforms and partnered openly with federal agencies like DHS and the State Department's Global Engagement Center. They really want to like shut everybody, shut you down across all the platforms. And I remember this was floated at one point that if you got booted from one platform, you'd be booted from all the platforms. More on this report and its similarity to proposals currently circulating in Washington soon. We need independent media more than ever, folks. Please support independent media. We have been um, suppressed like crazy. We just reached our first $1,000 goal to raise money to get Jesse Jet a new computer for American tradition and to be able to produce better music. There will be other projects in the future that we want to raise money for. The best way to do that is to scan that QR code right there on screen. If you have a phone and it'll go to your to your uh, Kofi, you can pay via PayPal or via credit card. Alternatively, you can subscribe monthly to our Patreon, to our Substack. You can donate either one time or monthly via Rumble. That's a video platform that's an alternate to YouTube. Or to get money into our hands right away, Cash App, dollar sign, Indie News Network, where they take zero fees out. 